Okay, John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to be getting into the new birth. All about the new birth. John 3, 1. There was a man of the Pharisees, which we talked about. A man named Nicodemus, we talked about. A ruler of the Jews. The same came by Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi. We went through all that. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. No man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, let's take first, let's take the little thing. Here is Nicodemus. He, he comes up to Jesus. How do you do, Jesus? I know who you are. We know who you are. And people say, well, what would Jesus do? Notice Jesus doesn't say hello or any greeting. He doesn't say, oh, how do you do? Good day and all that. Nicodemus greets him. He says, very, very, I say unto you, except the first thing that comes out of Jesus talking to Nicodemus, you must be born again. He didn't ask him how his day was going. And there are people who say, you know, when you're going out evangelizing, get a common thing, you know, you know, if they got roses in the yard or tulips or if they got a boat, you know, talk about the boat and the tulips and all that. And you know what? No. Jesus didn't say, you know, well, I, I did that one time going witnessing and we talked about the tulips or something. And by the time we came around talking about Jesus or getting to the Bible, oh, we got to go. Sorry, thank you for coming. And uh, rushes out the door. We're not there to talk about tulips. We're not there to hunky dory, how you do. No, we're there about Jesus Christ. Jesus did not, you know, have a well to do conversation. He went right to the point. Now, that woman at the well, he, 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 listen, he's thirsty. Give me a drink. And then he goes right into, I'm the water of life. There's no wasting of time. So, we're looking at, you must be born again. Verse 3. Except the man be born again. Now, that expression is found only three times in the Bible. That's John right here, 3-3. Three, three. And it says also in John 3, 7, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. And then we go over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1. Verse 23. 1 Peter 1, 23. We'll see the third time. And with these three here, we get what being born again is. Now, you got to be careful when you're witnessing if you're dealing with a Catholic. Because mm -hmm. if you walk up to a Catholic and say, well, have you been born again? And they'll say yes. But their born again is not the scriptural born again. Their born again is by the traditions of the church, not the scripture. Now, look what Peter says. <clears throat> being born again. Not of a corruptible seed, man, Adam. And that's going to bring us to chapter 3 of John. But of an incorruptible, Jesus Christ, by the word of God, and remember John chapter 1, Jesus is the word, which liveth and bideth forever. So when we're looking at being born again, according to what Peter says, not of Adam, it doesn't happen by man. We'll look at that in John chapter 3. It has to be of Jesus Christ, the word of God. Now the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. If you're going to have an evangelistic, and you don't have the word of God, there is no means for the new birth. 
And the new birth is the salvation that gives us the new birth of being saved. You need the word. So back to John. John chapter 3. Because a lot of places today, they're not having the word. We'll give you a movie. We'll give you... We'll give you the color, uh, the wordless book. You gotta think about that. The wordless book. Aren't we supposed to have the word? Well, you know, we tell them the red is for the blood. And, uh, what's the scripture you you apply? Well, we just tell the basics without the scripture, without the word. Well, that's not salvation. So John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In verse 7, Marvel not, I say unto you, ye must be born again. It is a priority. If you have not been born again, you're not saved. And we're going to go into what the scriptures say. Chapter 3, verse 4. After Jesus says, Accept the man be born again, verse 3, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, Jesus, How can a man be born when he's old? That's a good question. Nicodemus does not understand what Jesus said. And so is not many people. You, you can't just go up to somebody and say, are you born again? They don't know what you're talking about. I very rarely will use the term born again, evangelism or street ministry, unless I have been preaching all day about salvation in Jesus. But the very tip of the iceberg, very, very minute of this iceberg, will I use the, the term born again. Because nobody knows what that means. Nicodemus is a Pharisee of the rulers of the Jews. And he said, what? I'm an old person. How am I going to be born of a mother? Can he enter the second time? into the mother's womb, and be born. So he does acknowledge the new birth. There's two births. But he is not thinking spiritual. He is thinking physical mother, womb. And that's where the Catholics get John chapter 6 all messed up. Physical, literal, bread and blood. When it's a spiritual application. And that's what Jesus is talking about. And we'll see the difference between the physical and the spiritual application in a moment. But Nicodemus, I don't understand what you're saying. And it's perfectly well. And this will be the attitude when somebody who's never read the Bible and you are, are you being born again? Hmm? Eh? That's the proper attitude. Because they haven't read their Bible. Most of my jury, the people that you're witnessing to today are, have not been in the church. They don't read their Bible. And what we're reading about right now is probably not even taught in churches today. So this is not where you would go when you're witnessing to somebody. This is, would be... They have confessed that they're a sinner. They are on their way to becoming saved. I, I bring this up, the new birth. Or after they have received Christ as their Savior, and they've truly said, then I would say, hey, let me show you the new birth. Let me show you what happened to you. Jesus answered, verse 5, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, physical, 
Now he's answering Nicodemus. That's the that's the motherly birth. That's the womb, the water. When a woman gives birth, the expression is the water the water broke. And that's what Jesus said, born of a woman. There it is. That's the physical birth. The water is here's a baby. It has been born. You can hold the baby. You can hug the baby. You can take pictures of the baby. You can name the baby. That's the water birth. That's the first birth. That's the birth that Nicodemus is looking at. Okay? But Nicodemus' question is like, do I go back and do it again? Uh, Jesus, that's impossible. And yes, it is absolutely impossible to go back to be physically born again. He says, born of water. That's the first birth. And of the Spirit, capital S. That's the second birth. That's the spiritual birth. That's the birth that you cannot take a picture of. You can't hold that birth. That's no pain in that birth. In actuality, in the, in, the, in the spiritual birth of a believer, we don't even know when that happened. Now, I myself, and you have to go back, I was saved on a Saturday, April 15th, April 25th, 1987, on a Saturday, April 25th. Now, if you go back to the previous Sunday, it's the first time I ever went to church and I heard the gospel. Now, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save me April 25th. I knelt down and asked God to save me. But between that Sunday morning message and April 25th, was I born again before I confessed? Did, the Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Between Sunday morning and and Saturday afternoon, I could have already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And not, I, I, if I would have died before that Saturday, and if I've already put my heart trust in what I heard about Jesus, if I became born again, because you're born again when you when your heart believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you become saved. I don't know if there was an altar call or anything like that, but I could have right there at that pew. Hearing that God, I say, Lord, I need that, what that preacher's saying. Or the moment that I called my grandma and said, you know, I don't know what's wrong. I need, I need to talk to somebody. I need something. That ain't God. And at that moment, with my heart, I could have called upon God and got the new birth. We really don't know exact time and moment we because <laughs> it could have been the day before we got saved, a couple days before. We might have got saved before we thought we got saved. Because it's our heart. And then with our heart comes after the mouth. Saturday, I knelt down and I prayed and with my heart. And then the following Sunday, the next day, I testified to the Lord Jesus Christ. So here's a spiritual birth that they really don't know what the date is. And we can't go back into a photo album. But in order to get the spiritual birth, you got to have this, the physical birth. You cannot be born again inside a mother's womb. You have not been born. So he says, born of water and of the spirit. So there are two births. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh, mother, is flesh, physical, seen. Hold the baby. Take pictures of the baby. Look at the baby photo album. The birth announcements. That which is born in flesh is flesh. Pinch yourself. That's flesh. 
That which is born of the spirit is spirit. You can't see that. You can't put up on, on a film. I mean, you can, I've heard of people that, you can film the baby's birth. You can be there in the, in the uh, delivery room. And you can film it. And then you can put it on the screen and say, everybody look, this is my child being born. You cannot film or record the spiritual birth. And yet, without the spiritual birth, you're not going to heaven. What is that spiritual birth? It's with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto salvation. You have called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. This does not happen by a prayer. I, I said a prayer. I ate the body of Jesus. I knocked on doors. And verse 7, marvel not, Nicodemus is stunned. Even though Jesus has now explained to him the physical and the spiritual birth, birth marvel not. That means Nicodemus is standing there with a look on his face like, what are you talking about? So will people who are not saved, who don't know the Bible, have not read the Bible, who do not have the Holy Spirit, who are not saved. They're not going to understand what we're talking about now. But this is what happens after we're saved or at the moment we're saved. Nicodemus doesn't understand it because he has not been born again. Marvel not that I say unto you, ye must be born again. It's a priority without it. And Jesus is going to go and explain a little bit more about it. Mark my place so I don't lose my place here. The wind. Can you see the wind? No. Now, you can see the wind blowing the trees, but do you see the wind? No. Can you hold a baby? Yes. Can you see a baby? Yes. That's the physical birth. Can you see the wind? No. Can you hold the wind? No. This is the spiritual birth. The spiritual birth does not come by sight. And a lot of the, the modern church and day is what you can see. You see the nice suit on the preacher. You see the nice drum set. I mean, church has got drum set. You see, we got the, the word of God on a screen. We got the bouncing ball for the hymnal on the screen. Do you see all the doodads and all the decorations? That's not spiritual. God is a spirit. You can't see God. You must worship him in spirit and truth. The new birth is not anything physical. You don't get a documentation. You don't get a record by man of your spiritual birth. Now you'll get a record that you were baptized you may get a certificate that you knelt down and received the Lord Jesus Christ. You may get a certificate that you dedicated your baby. Okay? That's all physical. You can see it. But the new birth, like I said, we don't know what it, it could have happened before you came and called upon Christ. Maybe you said a prayer and it wasn't salvation and later on you came to know Christ. Well, if you just said a prayer and it was just a prayer, you weren't born again. It comes upon salvation and belief. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What comes with that salvation? The new birth. 
The new birth is when, G when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. So he says, the wind bloweth where it listeth, wherever the wind goes. Thou hearest the sound. Now notice he said, thou hearest the sound. And Paul writes to us in Romans 10, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. When somebody says someone has gotten saved, I am lenient of their salvation when I don't hear it out of their own mouth. Now, maybe I'm a little strickler. Maybe I'm, I, I'm too old-time Methodist. But Jesus said, the sound, Paul said with the mouth, with the new birth, it seems to me with the scriptures, it comes to be, I'm saved. Now, the day that I got saved, April 25th, I told everyone, hey, I feel, man, I just trusted Christ. I went to church the next day on Sunday, and I rose my hand, and I stood up, I said, people, yesterday I received the Lord Jesus Christ. After the church service, listen, I'm a brand new Christian, maybe 24 hours, I went home to my dad, and I said, dad, I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to, I don't know what the words were, but I, you got to believe on Jesus. That's, you hear the sound. That's with the mouth confessions made on salvation. The first thing you're going to do with a new birth, you're going to tell people. As with the physical, look, I, I have a son. Look, I have a daughter. With the spiritual birth, and I'm going to say personally, because I can be wrong, but I don't think with the scriptures. If you don't tell me you're saved and believe on Jesus, someone else has to tell, tell me that. I don't know about your salvation. Now, I know, I forget which one, but, but the younger Bush, President Bush. I read his book. And in his book, he gives a, a meeting with uh, um, uh, Billy Graham. And he writes in that book how he met with Billy Graham and how he believed on Jesus. That's a written testament. I believe that. But if I go here through the grapevine, through the through grapevine, through this grapevine, through this person that showed me this person, that person, this person, that person, tell me that they... No, that's not scripture. That's not scripture at all. So... But can't not tell when to come it. You can't explain the new birth. Now I'm going to tell you something with the new birth. On a Sunday I went and heard the gospel. So I don't even remember. Sometime during that week I, I, I called. I said, you know what? I got to hear more. On Saturday afternoon I met with a couple of church people with an open Bible. I was declared... I was a sinner. I'm going to hell. I knelt down. I didn't want to go to hell. I put my trust in Jesus. On yeah. Sunday morning, I raised my hand. I stood up. I believed on Jesus. On Sunday afternoon, I went witnessing already, and I went to my dad and told him about what I knew about salvation in hell and Jesus. In the middle of that week, I, I, I'm in my apartment, and I'm taking a shower, and I'm washing myself, and I just, I felt cleaner than I've ever felt to be cleaned in my life. That what soap couldn't clean me. For once in my life, I felt a, not a physical cleaning, but man, I felt, hey, you know what? All right, at that point, Sunday, I heard the gospel to the following week that I'm taking a shower. Tell me at what point did the Holy Spirit come in me? I don't know. Because the day that I called my grandma and said, hey, i got to have something. With my mouth, I'm confessing. Maybe I've already believed. I don't know. Saturday, I'm already, hey, I'm, I, I trust in Jesus. And only when we get to heaven. 
I've had people saved that I didn't know I got saved till I heard their testimony after. Like, whoa. They sat in on a Bible study or preaching I was doing. And, you know, I got saved during that meeting. Uh, whoa. <laughs> you did? <laughs> but cannot tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth. You don't know where God's going to bring you. I mean, if you had told me April 26, 1987, that you're going to be preaching on the streets, you're going to aggravate the world, you're going to aggravate your family, you're going to aggravate Christians, you're going to aggravate preachers, and you're going to be sitting there teaching John, and you're going to have writing commentaries, and you're going to have a doctor title to your name. What? Man, I was a, I was a wicked, vile sinner, and you don't even want to know my sins. And look where the Holy Spirit brought me. Not me. And look what the Holy Spirit is dealing with me with sins. That's not natural for you to sit there and say, "Oh, Father," <coughs> he said. My voice is still gone. I have sinned against you, holy and righteous you are, and I am not. That's the Holy Spirit. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. What do we learn? <laughs> We learn that the physical birth is physical. There it is. Pictures, happiness, all that. We learn that the spiritual birth. Pin it down. I don't know, really. Write a write a hundred word essay on, on what happened when the Holy Spirit came in you. I don't know. The day I got saved, I did not know Half or three quarters of stuff I know today. Now, from the Catholic Church, yeah, I knew that Mary was a virgin. I knew that Jesus was born, but I now know he wasn't born on Christmas. I knew that he arose from the grave, not on Easter now. And I, when I was in the Catholic Church, I'd be like, wait a minute, he came out of the grave three days and three nights. Okay. I believe that. And they talked about his ascension into heaven. Okay. I read that in the Bible. Well, why is it the Catholic Church has still got him nailed on that cross above the priest's head? That always wondered me. That's like, that don't make sense. He's in heaven, but he's still nailed to the tree. But the Holy Spirit came into me and says, let me show you some truth. Oh, okay. They're a heresy. The Bible is true. I'll believe that. That's only by the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you when the Holy Spirit came and moved in my heart. I don't know when. I can tell you my testimony right on out. But when the Holy Spirit actually began, the Holy Spirit already began in me the moment I heard the gospel because the Holy Spirit draws men to God. Was the Holy Spirit there, God already knowing I would be saved? And, that we could, and we can go miles. And we're not going to, so I don't want to confuse anybody. But let's look at the fact is, the spiritual new birth is when the Holy Spirit comes in you, when you got saved, you don't have any photographs, you don't have any physical evidence, But it's an act of God. So now we look at this again, and we look at verse five, the spiritual and the physical. Now I know that the fluid inside the womb is not water, but it has water. Eniotic fluid, I believe it's called. Okay? 
when a physical birth happens, there's a breaking of the uh, uh, amniotic sac. The amniotic fluid is water from the mother and is actually urine from the baby. It's the baby's urine. So with the physical birth, you're holding the baby. And what they call afterbirth. That's a that's two marks that you had a baby. There it is. And then you got the you know the baby's cute little they, they come in, they take the photographs. And I got the pictures of both my children when they were in the hospital before we took them home. Cute little picture. That's the physical. I can show you pictures of me growing up. I can. I, I, there was no picture, but there was a picture taken April twenty fifth, nineteen eighty seven. That I, I can show you that picture of me, but I cannot show you a picture of the Holy Spirit birth. There is no evidence, no fluid, no water baptism. That shows you right there. It's not water baptism of salvation because when the Holy Spirit came in me, there was no fluid. Now we have, look at verse 3, John 3, 3. The kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. And there's another one that says kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God. Kingdom of heaven. Well, there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of heaven. We'll see them throughout John. The kingdom of heaven is a visible kingdom. Like the baby being born, you can see the baby. What's in the kingdom of heaven? Birds, lions, tigers, rocks, trees, people. That's the kingdom of heaven. It's a visible, seeable, there it is, kingdom. We will see Jesus Christ seated on the throne of David with our eyeballs in a literal kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God, God is a spirit. It's an invisible kingdom. You can't see the kingdom. When we get to New Jerusalem, John chapter 4, there is the throne of God. Are we going to see God? No, he's a spirit. Do you realize the Bible says that God's everywhere? All right? There he is. 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 I don't see him. That's the spiritual. And that's the difference between the physical birth and the spiritual birth. That's the difference between the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. One you can see and poke and grab and take a picture of. The other you can't see. You can't take a picture of. In verse 3 it says, cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5 it says, enter the kingdom of God. You cannot see and you cannot enter the kingdom of God, which you can't see. <laughs> Until you're born again. So a lost man that dies and goes to hell and off to the lake of fire is never going to see the kingdom of God. Or enter the kingdom of God. And realize when a lost man dies and is, is at the great white throne judgment. I know there are saved, some people don't believe it, but there are saved people at the great white throne judgment. But we're not going to get into that. But let's take a lost man to great white throne judgment. He's about to be cast off in the lake of fire. You say, well, isn't he going to see God then? No. He never sees God. Well, who's on the throne? Jesus Christ. When we are absent from the body and present with the Lord, when a Christian dies or the, or the point of the rapture, at that moment we departed from this body or the body goes with the rapture, then we'll see God. 
How are we going to see God? I don't know, but he's a spirit. No lost man can see God. But take the people right now in John chapter 3. Here's Nicodemus. He's looking at God. The physical indwelling of God in a man's body, there is Jesus Christ, which the Jehovah Witnesses deny. You are seeing the 100% man in God through Jesus Christ. Now, where is the 100% God in Jesus Christ that you saw? The miracles. How did Jesus open the eyes of the blind? I don't know. That's spiritual. How did Jesus open up the ears of the dead? I don't know. It's spiritual. There's the physical. Jesus Christ with hands, fingers, eyes, nose, and toes. There's the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God with the words. A lot of times he spoke. All right, devils, get out of him. Boom, that's the kingdom of God. And no one saw it. And there's no pictures of it. And this is, I guess this, this, this is going to be a couple days, a couple weeks study. We're getting a new birth, but we got to understand there's a physical and there's a spiritual. And I have people sometimes come up to me, show me God. I can't. Two reasons. Number one, he's a spirit. Number two, you're not going to see God until you get the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells in you. And the only way you're going to get the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells in you if you put your faith and trust in God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you get that spirit that dwells in you. And until you believe on Jesus and get the Holy Spirit, you're not going to see nothing. Well, seeing is believing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What's things not seen? The spiritual. You realize, and I, I don't want to go out of the world here, but let's take an auto accident. And there's a lot of people who've been saved in auto accident. There's a physical auto accident. Let's say two cars that crash in each other. Let's say by the grace of God, whether it's saved or lost, because I believe God helps the lost to. One of the people in the car, driver or, or passenger, let's say God came down and intervened with their angels, whatever it is, to save that person from that accident, from dying. All right. There's the picture. The two cars are whacked up. Show me the picture, whether God or angel or however he did. Show me the picture of God doing something to prevent that person from dying. Now, see, we're in that realm of spiritual and we're in that realm of physical. And it's all around us. I know God tests my patience with red lights. There's the red light. That is physical. Now tell me how God changes that light into, a, into being red. Do they see the fingers of God come down like Belshazzar whitening on the wall? Do you see the finger? Open up that panel. Red. No, you don't see that. Now, this is, this is the physical and spiritual birth. I have pictures of myself and of, of my children when they were in the hospital before they brought home. This is our baby. That's physical. Show me a picture the day that you got saved where the Holy Spirit came and dwelt. I can't. Polaroid can't give you those pictures. So Jesus says that water is the physical, verse 5. <coughs> Spirit is spiritual. How hard is that? So, what we have here is being born of a woman. Physical. There's my mommy. They take the baby, they put the mom, and they put the baby in the arms of the mother, and they and they call that bonded. Well, the day I got saved, no one picked me up and put me in the arms of God. 
But God came down and dwelt in me. So we must get the water is physical mom, mother. The spiritual is spiritual and God. And you can't get them the mother of God. No, no, don't, don't get it confused now. There's no mother of God. That's a whole nother study. So there are two births. There's a physical birth. Mom, mother, man, born in sin. And he soils diapers. Jesus Christ soiled diapers. I don't find that very hard to believe God, but God, Mary had to change Jesus' diaper. That's the physical. Spiritual. God, spirit, God, no soil diapers. There's no bathrooms or garbage cans in heaven. The physical birth is when mom and dad came together and made a baby. And in that womb is water. She gives birth to a man and he's a sinner. The spiritual birth is when God comes into the man, saves the man. He's born by spirit. Now you are born of God and you're sinless. And now you're going to heaven. The sinning man, you don't go to heaven. You go to hell. So just the physical birth, when you die, goes to hell. When you are born again, the spiritual birth, you will die and be absent from the body, or you may not die and a rapture happen. And you go to heaven or New Jerusalem. Now let's look at the spiritual birth. Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10, 28. Let's look at the physical. And while you turn to Matthew 10, 28, I don't want to get gross. I don't want to get... But you need two physical beings to make a baby. A mother and a father. Salvation, you need God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit are spiritual beings. And Jesus was man. So Matthew 10, 28, here's the physical body. Fear not that which kill the body. There's a physical body. But are not able to kill the soul. That's spiritual. But <coughs> fear him, <coughs> fear God, which is able to destroy soul and body in hell. You have a soul that's eternal. You can't see that soul. But it's there. Luke 12, 5. Luke 12, 5. In Luke 12, 5. Again, this is what we just read. But here we go. It's a verily, very, it's repeated. So it's got to be important. This stuff is in the Bible more than the birthday of Jesus. But I will forewarn you. Whom ye, whom ye shall fear, fear him, which after he has killed has the power to cast into hell. I say unto you, fear him, but verse 4, be not afraid of them, kill the body. So there is your physical body. 
And God can take that body and he can take that soul that you don't see. And there's an afterlife. Now, when a human being dies, you see the body die. You close. I've had it twice. And I've been to some funerals. But you never see the soul. And I hear people, oh, I saw it like, no, no, shut up. Okay? No, just shut up. Because anybody to see a light when they die should have been Jesus on the cross. And there was no light and fluttering whatevers. So now we have a physical body that can die. We have a soul that does not die. Amen. And that soul will go to hell unless you get the new birth. And when you get the new birth outside the rapture, you'll be absent from the body, death, and you'll be present with the Lord. Or without the new birth, you will go to hell. We are a complex being. We are a so body, soul, and spirit. Here's the body. Inside me is something that has eyes, fingers, nose, and toe, like the, like, like the rich man in hell. And we have something in us, spirit. God breathed into man and he became a living spirit. We have that air. You can't see the air. You can't see the soul. But you can see the body, okay? You can't see God. That's the spirit. And the soul. You can't see the Holy Spirit. That's Holy Spirit and soul. But you can see Jesus, your body. And this is all the realm of seeing and not seeing the physical and the spiritual birth is what can be seen and what cannot be seen. You can see the physical birth of a mother, but you can't see the spiritual birth of a person who is saved. And yet that spiritual birth will determine if we go to heaven or we go to hell. If we're born once, the Bible speaks in Revelation 20, there's a second death. If you're born once. If you've been born just of a mother and not of God, you'll die twice, Revelation 20. If you're born again, John chapter 3, you die once, and then again, you may not die because we're coming closer and closer to the rapture. Without the spiritual birth, you must be born again. You don't go to heaven, Jesus said. You don't see and you don't enter the kingdom of God. Now the spiritual birth, let's run these. And we got a lot of scriptures to look at. So let's run these. Let's see where we go with these. Acts 16. <coughs> we'll get this section done. Acts 16. This is a spiritual birth. You are born physically, and if you're saved, you're born spiritually. If you're not born spiritually, you're not saved. Acts 16, 31. Acts 16, 30, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. You must be saved. Salvation rests upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Not another Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. That Lord Jesus Christ is not the Jesus of the, jo of the Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> <clears throat> because the Lord of, of the Jesus Christ, there is no Lord 
for the Jehovah Witnesses because Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus is not God. That Lord Jesus Christ say that Jesus is God. That's a physical man that had a physical life that ate and drank and slept and ate and cried and suffered and died on Calvary's cross. And the Lord, the God part is he was also God that no one saw. And then John 3, 3, we saw, you must be born again. Romans 6, 23. Romans 6, 23. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. We're going to die. Because we're sinners. We're born of Adam. Physical. The physical birth of man through a woman is through Adam. That's the wages of sin. You're a sinner even though you don't sin, but you're sin anyway. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Our physical birth, we are born of great, 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 great grandpa Adam, and we are sinners. We're going to die. But the gift of God's eternal life, now take a picture of eternal life. What's eternal life? Take a picture of it. That's spiritual. It's through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we saw in Acts 16.31. Eternal life rests upon Jesus Christ, where our physical bodies are going to give us death. The spiritual side, eternal life, is by Jesus Christ. And no one and nothing else, that is our spiritual birth through Jesus Christ. Our physical birth is from mom and dad, which runs all the way back to Adam. Through Adam, death. Through Jesus Christ, there's life. The physical birth brings death and hell. Luke 16, 23. Every woman that gives birth to a baby, that baby's going to die. I don't care what science does or anything. Unless outside the rapture. But in order not to die in the rapture, you've got to have the spiritual birth. So you can't talk about the rapture outside the spiritual birth. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. That's the soul. The soul has eyes. You can't see the soul. But you can see that the soul has eyes. Explain it. And it can't. But the physical rich man had physical eyeballs. So the physical birth gives us death and it gives you hell. That rich man is in hell. The spiritual birth gives you death and heaven. Or by 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, you can have the rapture of 2 Corinthians 5, 8. The spiritual birth in this late period of the church age may not give us death. 
It may conquer death completely in the rapture. Or if the Lord tarries, we're going to die through the physical death, birth, I mean. We're going to die through the physical birth, and we're going to die maybe through the spiritual birth. But the physical birth <coughs> gives you to hell. The spiritual new birth gets you to heaven where you don't go to hell, and that's by Jesus Christ. The physical birth will give you death in hell by Adam. And Jesus Christ is called the second Adam. So, closing, the physical birth. Ready? There are doctors and nurses and the mother. Sometimes the father. And a baby comes. Male or female. Or multiple. The spiritual birth, there's God, there's the Holy Spirit, there is Jesus. When? Well, there's no doctors, but there can be Christians present if they're witnessing to you. And the physical birth, they write words down a certificate called a birth certificate. In the spiritual birth, you are born by the word of God, John chapter 1. And those words are not written words. Though God has started a book, I believe, I believe, I believe every person born has a book that God keeps a record of. I believe that. But, and next time we're going to get more into the spiritual birth and more scripture. But we've got to get down that there's a physical, what can be seen, and there's a spiritual, what can't be seen. Physical is a mother, water. Spiritual is God and the Holy Spirit. And don't get baptism mixed up with the spiritual. Because there is a baptism of the physical. You're inside water which is not really water, but it's partial water, inside the mother's womb, which is urine. And I don't know when the last denomination goes and baptizes their converts in urine. And if they do, it's very disgusting. And the new birth is when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that has no water at all. Jesus said, as the wind Go ahead, baptize someone in the wind. You can't. It's absolutely without man. Physical birth, man. Mother and father, doctors, blah, blah, blah. Spiritual birth, no man, only by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That's that.